I'm now going to call on the aldermen who have not marked themselves present. So please mark yourself present. If you have any issues, you could also raise your hand. Alderman Hopkins. Alderman Hopkins is not present. Alderman Dahl. Alderman Dahl is present. Alderman King. Alderman King is not present. Alderman Harrison. Alderman Harrison is not present. Alderman Beal. Alderman Beal is not present. Alderman Solowski Garza. Thank you. Nice and loud. Alderman Abarca, not present. Alderman Burke, not present. Alderman Lopez, not present. Alderman Coleman, not present. Alderman Moore. Oh, sorry, you is yep, we have other. Alderman Curtis, not present. Alderman Taylor, not present. Alderman Brookins. Oh, Alderman Taylor. Oh, Alderman Taylor is present. Alderman Coleman is present. Alderman Tavares. Alderman Tavares not present. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Cicho Lopez not present. Alderman Maldonado. Alderman Maldonado is present. Alderman Burnett. Burnett is present. Alderman Talaferro. Alderman, Cardo Alderman Talaferro is not present. Alderman Cardona. Alderman Cardona is present. Alderman Waggispack. Alderman, Alderman Waggispack not present. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Rodriguez Sanchez not present. Alderman Austin not present. Alderman Riley. Alderman Riley is present. Alderman Knudsen. Alderman Knudsen is present. Alderman Gardner. Alderman Gardner is not present. Alderman Silverstein. Silverstein is not present. Alderman Talaferro, I'll mark you present. Anyone else I missed? Alderman Tabaros. Alderman Tabaros is present. Alderman Cicho Lopez is present. Anyone else? All right, we are closing the vote. Alderman Silverstein is present. Alderman Silverstein is present. Madam Mayor, all members present have been recorded. We have a quorum. There, pardon me, 39. There are 39 members present. We have a quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing uh, for the invocation which will be delivered this uh, morning by Pastor Noah Chung of Park Community Church in Hyde Park. Pastor, the floor is yours. Join me in prayer. Gracious and merciful Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this gathering of our civic leaders who are concerned with the welfare of this city, of our city. Thank you for their service and their sacrifice. Father, we also thank you for many blessings, for these provisions you give each day, like the very heat in this building that keeps us warm and dry. We thank you for your love that comforts us, gives us peace, and guides us. We thank you for Chicago, our city, full of grit and diversity, and with its many challenges as well. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from above our Heavenly Father. In your scriptures, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authority since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Help our citizens to do so. Therefore, I also pray for our governing authorities who have this incredible responsibility to lead our city. I ask that you graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid all the conflicting interests and issues of our times. Grant them a thirst and a hunger for justice and righteousness for the needs of our people. Grant them a confidence soaked in humility to do what is good and right, no matter what others say. Grant them the clarity and creativity to solve the many complex and systemic issues facing our city. Grant them the ability to work in harmony with one another, even when there is disagreement. And last but not least, grant them and their families peace and joy as they all know the work is heavy. I also pray for the agenda set before them today. Please give an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Chicago. Lord, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. In your name, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat>
If you want to attract more people to the teaching profession, we can't shortchange them on parental leave. Many of my friends and family in the private sector get four to six months of paid parental leave. So you can imagine how excited I was when the mayor announced in the fall that she was going to grant city workers 12 weeks of paid parental leave. My heart burst with joy only to be crushed several months later when she rescinded her promise to offer to public sector employees like myself. We were so close to getting this basic right that most countries offer. There was even a timeline for the Board of Education to vote on it in January. If I choose to have a second child, I have to be extremely strategic about when I have it so that I can attempt to be with the baby for as long as possible because I won't have bank sick days to take. I cannot believe that in 2023, my employer, the mayor, has control over where I live and when I'm going to have a child. The Handmaid's Tale isn't far off. When people wonder why CTU gets involved in the political realm, it's because politicians like the mayor have an outsized role in our personal and professional lives. And so we need champions on our side, like many of you aldermen who stood with us at our press conference this morning. In 2019, Mayor Lightfoot, you messed with our jobs and our students and we went on an 11 day strike. Now you're messing with our babies. And I know that there's nothing that this mama bear won't do to protect her child. I urge the mayor, the members of the city council, and the hand-picked board of education to negotiate the details of the 12-week parental leave policy with CTU and approve it as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stopoulos, for your comments. Our next speaker is Janine Raniel. Hello, good morning. My name is Janine Rangel. I'm an organization with Independent Drivers Will of Illinois. I'm here today because tens of thousands of ride shares and delivery drivers are very vulnerable to sounding unguaranteed, unfair, and arbitrary disactivation practice. Many drivers find themselves only unable to work to support their families due to a variety of reasons, source, and problems, and uploading their documents to the apps and being incorrectly flagged and fraudulent as well as being subject to false complaints for customers who are either looking for a free ride or free meal or are retaining against a driver who is trying to follow the rules and traffic laws. Gig workers deserve to be able to work with dignity and respect without fear of being terminated with no due process and no investigation. I'm asking to city council members to support and pass meaningful legislation to put an end to unwarranted disactivation. Please support the ordinance that is being introduced today for other women, Sue Garza, app companies care most about making profits, most often experience of workers who drive long hours to make ends meet. It's time to stop with this company because the families have a many, many lounge work in no, I complain with this, um, and two times to the club play the families. When my family is Los, las familias tenemos que soportar y parar estos abusos de estas compañías. Gracias. Thank you, Rizman and Al, for your comments. Our next speaker is Sarah Chang. Hello, good morning. My name is Sarah Chang, and I'm a nursing student at the University of Illinois Chicago, where my faculty are currently on strike fighting for the future of higher education. I'm also a lifelong resident of the 49th Ward. I'm here to demand that the city council pass the Amazon tax as fast as possible with no carve outs or exceptions. We need the Amazon tax to fund permanently affordable social housing, public education, and violence prevention and mental health services. Corporations like Amazon pay little to nothing in taxes while working people are barely getting by, working multiple jobs and splitting rent just to survive. This city council and administration have passed austerity budget after austerity budget, cutting public services year after year. We need affordable housing and fully funded public education, but working class people shouldn't have to pay for a crisis we didn't create. 
A tax like this was successfully passed in Seattle in 2020 and raises $240 million each year. Since being passed, they haven't seen the mass exodus of businesses that opponents threatened would happen. Rather, we see a sustained stream of funding for social housing. We need this tax here in Chicago. Y'all run it, y'all run for office and get elected, claiming you're here to represent the working people of Chicago, but time after time, we pay the brunt of corporations living tax-free in our city. Here's an opportunity for you all to show who you stand for in the city of Chicago, working people or big business. Pass the Amazon tax with no delays, no watering it down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Chang, for your comments. Our next speaker is Stephen Everett. Right. Hello, Mayor Lightfoot, um, members of the city council. Thank y'all for having me here. Um, it's an honor to meet every last one of y'all. I don't care what side y'all on, Democrat or Republican. Um, we have a, um, my, my name is Stephen Everett. I'm a rideshare driver. And I uh, just want to talk about an issue that rideshare drivers are having right now that's uh, it's just ridiculous. And this is something that we all can come together to solve. A lot of rideshare drivers right now are being unfairly deactivated for um, no reason at all. Um, sometimes passengers lie and everything. A lot of us rideshare drivers, this is our only job. This is what keeps us out of trouble. 70% of rideshare drivers are minorities and from you know bad neighborhoods and it, it does give us a chance to make money and this keeps us out of trouble but if we're being unfair de deactivated um we can't we can't you know um work um and, and get money i just ask that all members here um if you can please support um auto woman to gaza um support support her <laughs> but please, please, please support her um, and what she's about to bring to the floor. Um, and I, we are really appreciate it. But, you know, I just want you guys to know that um, it's a lot of it's a lot of drivers that's that's suffering. And we're, we're, go we're not only going through unfair deactivations there's other things as well. But this is just what I want to speak on, because this is what's about to hit the floor. Mayor Lightfoot, I, I really appreciate y'all having us here. Um, and, and like I said, no matter what side you're on, you know, we all need to come together and solve these issues, these minor issues that these trillion dollar companies um, put on workers like me. Um, we can definitely do better. Um, us Uber drivers, we, we, we run the city. We take people to work every day. We make sure people get home safe. Um, we, we stop a lot of um, car accidents from happening from drunk driving, all of that. So we deserve to be treated treated right. We deserve to be treated fair. So we're just asking you guys to support um, Auto Woman Sugaza. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Everett, for your comments. Our next speaker is Dustin Spence. Uh, good morning. My name is Dustin Spence. I'm a member of Socialist Alternatives and a resident of the 49th Ward. I'm speaking today to demand that the City Council pass the Amazon tax as fast as possible with no carve-outs or exceptions. We need the Amazon tax to fund permanently affordable social housing, public education, and violence prevention and mental health services. Corporations like Amazon pay little to nothing in taxes while working people are barely getting by working multiple jobs and splitting rent just to survive. According to recent reporting, property taxes in Pilsen went up an average of 45% this year. And in my own neighborhood of Rogers Park, they went up 24%. Meanwhile, homelessness is increasing throughout the city. A tent encampment shares the park right next to my home. And yet this city council boycotted the Bring Chicago Home Ordinance an ordinance which only began to address the problems working people face. Enough is enough. While working class Chicagoans are feeling the crush of ever increasing tax payments, we are told that the city has no money to pay for the things we so desperately need. This city council and administration, both beholden to the Democratic Party and its corporate interests, have passed 
austerity budget after austerity budget, cutting public services year after year while spending billions on an ever-expanding budget for the wholly ineffective, corrupt, and racist CPD. This shows once again that Democrats are not the friends of working Chicagoans, regardless of whether they label themselves progressive. This is why working people need representatives that are fully independent from the Republicans and Democrats, representatives who will fight for us and not the corporations. We need affordable housing and fully funded public education, but working class people shouldn't have to pay for a crisis we didn't create. This administration has increasingly shifted the cost of funding CPS to the school district, which in turn can only raise funds through property tax levies. This intentional defunding of our public schools strips working class Chicagoans of the primary educational resource for our children. The budget shortfall could reach as much as 600 million by 2050 without additional funding. This is funding that the mayor has refused to address. The ordinance that will be presented today, today addresses this very issue and could raise over half a billion dollars every single year and raises it without passing the burden on to working people. Pass the Amazon tax with no delays and no watering it down. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spence, for your comments. Our next speaker is Edward Karecki. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My comment is about St. Adalbert Church in Pilsen. This historic and architecturally significant church has been orange rated for 26 years, yet it is still in danger of destruction. In November, the integrity of the church was violated when the beautiful Pieta statue was removed. It's now over three years since Commissioner of Planning and Development Maurice Cox announced that the commission would move forward with landmarking the church, yet it has still not happened. Why, Mayor Lightfoot, is your administration blocking the landmark status for this historic church? Why, Mayor Lightfoot, did you and Alderman Spasato and Raboiras interfere to block the downzoning of this property in May 2020 after it was recommended by the zoning committee? Your actions are an insult to the Polish and Mexican immigrant communities and all Catholics and Chicagoans who want to see this beautiful church saved. The Pilsen community does not want development on this property, yet you will not honor their wishes. Mayor Lightfoot, your actions have opened yourself and the city to a lawsuit for violation of religious civil rights. Please stop opposing the wishes of your constituents and grant landmark status to St. Adalbert Church at the February 2023 meeting of the Commission on Landmarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Karecki, for your comments. Our next speaker is Bridget McBride. Hello. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, City Council members, and all attendees. As a resident of Chicago since 1989, one of my favorite hobbies is to get on our public transportation and explore one of our 77 neighborhoods throughout the city. One of these neighborhoods is Pilsen. And when traveling to Pilsen and getting off the pink line, you notice the spires of St. Adalbert's Church. For over 100 years, this destination has been home to the Polish and Mexican immigrants, as well as Catholics throughout the city to come and worship. In 2019, Maurice Cox was on board with moving to have this iconic Renaissance Revival Complex landmarked. That stalled. And since then, five religious institutions have been landmarked, three in Bronzeville, one in North Lawndale, and one in Bridgeport. Each of our 77 neighborhoods has an anchor that defines our community. In Pilsen, it's St. Aldebert. In order for economic growth and tourism to thrive and survive after everything we've been through, Mayor Lightfoot, I pray 
that you give Commissioner Maurice Cox permission to add to the next landmark commission agenda a preliminary vote to, to get protection in place to landmark Pilsen's iconic St. Aldebert's Church. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McBride, for your comments. Our next speaker is Dan McDermott. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, Mayor, Mayor Lightfoot and City Council members, I am here uh, to ask you to start the new year by seeking to do what is right for your constituents. St. Adelbert's has been asking the city for landmark status for over three years. They have proved that it is well-deserved. Ward Miller of Preservation Chicago has testified to that. When I ask why it has not been granted, I am told that the mayor and some alder persons do not like some of the 25th Ward Alderman's actions. I ask you to be known not for infighting, but for hearing the people. St. Adelbert's is a sacred space that deserves to be landmarked. The people have put forth business plans to bring in revenue from the convent to pay for maintenance of the church. They have been asking to correct a previous zoning designation and down zone, preventing huge developments that do not meet the needs of the neighborhood. I am a member of the 49th Ward, and I've also asked my older woman to seek um, landmark status for St. Ignatius, also closed by the Archdiocese, but having the same famed architect as St. Adelbert's. I have asked to keep the zoning that again does not allow developers to build yet more huge buildings in our dense neighborhood. I am appealing the closing of St. Ignatius to the Vatican, and when I talk to canon lawyers, they say they do not understand how the richest country in the world would destroy sacred spaces. It is unimaginable in Europe. I also hear that the council tends to do things to please the archdiocese. Why? There are all kinds of ways to pay their bills without destroying sacred spaces. I am a Catholic, but I am shocked to see what is going on with their decision makers. Um, as we approach an election, my guide for voting will be, did the mayor get things done and not let internal rivalries of or alderman actions to get in the way of doing what is right? If a church qualifies for landmark status, give it to them. Currently, my ward has been designated one of the 10 best neighborhoods in the Midwest. We will be getting more tourists and visitors like uh, in Pilsen, and we will be looking, they will be looking at such a historic place as St. Ignatius from an artistic and community serving perspective. And it will increase and make visitors more impressed with our city. People would also be impressed with the historic sacred space in Pilsen. Please do the right thing as Dr. Martin Luther King would do. And the rivalries, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDermott, for your comments. Our next speaker is Andrew Kopinski. Good morning, Mayor Lightfoot, and the members of the City Council and the general public. Um, I'd like to speak to you this morning about the St. Albert Church in the Pilsen community. Um, I believe it should be landmarked as soon as possible um, it, sh it should be at the top item of the next Landmark Commission meeting on February 23rd. It's long overdue. In, in addition, the property should be down zoned like other church properties as soon as possible. The Pilsen community supports this action. The St. Adelbert Catholic community supports this action. The Polish uh, immigrant community supports this action and the Mexican immigrant community supports this action. This is important in preserving the architectural and cultural history of Chicago. Sadly, the dismantling of St. Edelbert's has begun with the removal of the St. La, La Pieta statue. Time is of the absolute essence. There should be no more delays since, since time is of the essence. Mayor Lightfoot, please step up. Do the right thing. Landmark St. Albert's Church inside and outside, and landmark the equally historic rectory and convent. I thank you uh, for your time and have a good and productive day. Thank you, Mr. Kopinski, for your comments. 
Your Honor, there are no further speakers who have timely signed up for the public comment period. This concludes the public comment period. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, are resolutions. We have three resolutions today. Um, and the first is a resolution honoring DePaul University on its 125th anniversary. If you wish to speak to uh, this resolution, please raise your hand. We have in the box um, newly minted president of DePaul, Rob Manuel. Um, Eric Quezada is a student. Uh, Tommy Lee is a student. Juliana DeLeon is a student. Jalen Johnson, also a student. Elizabeth Clements, Alicia Pope, uh, Peter Coffey, and Edgar DeLeon. And I believe most of the students, maybe all of them, are from Chicago Public Schools. So welcome one and all. Any members of the body that wish to speak to this? The chair recognizes Alderman Sawyer. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. I just want to rise in support of this resolution as a fellow uh, alumna, alumnus, 1985, Department of Finance. Uh, congratulate you all, congratulate the administration on a fine job, congratulate these young students on, on getting your education at a fine institution, wonderful place. Uh, I appreciate you coming out today. Go Blue Demons. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sawyer. The chair recognizes um, Alderwoman Haddon. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I know I got to speak to you guys very briefly outside, uh, but just congratulations on your representation. Um, DePaul is a fantastic institution. Um, though it was not where I went for my undergraduate degree, I've been graced, thank you, uh, Ms. Pope, with a lovely uh, Blue Demons pen, and it is where I went to grad school. We're really fortunate in the city of Chicago to have access to world-class higher education institutions, especially ones that are mission-driven. Um, so I don't know what your career paths are going to be, but I know that the School of Public Service, um, I'm an SPS grad, um, really set me on my course, um, and DePaul has so much to offer. So really excited. Thank you guys for being such an integral part of Chicago. Thank you, Alderwoman Haddon. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Abarca. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I rise in support of this resolution. I too am a DePaul University alum, a very proud class of 2008 public policy. Um, and I too am one of the students of color, a first generation, a Pell Grant recipient, a person who had to take the blue line every day and then take the Fullerton bus over. So I wanna rise in support and congratulate you. Um, I am one of you. Uh, I can tell you that DePaul, um, my undergrad years were some of my fondest memories and it is my DePaul professors who have uh, supported me and to this day still um, support everything that I do. Uh, part of my career trajectory was uh, completely um, pointed in the direction that it did because of my time at DePaul. And so I am sad that I can no longer get a chicken sandwich at Bron Broncos, but um, that's quite all right. So again, congratulations to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Rodriguez. As a fellow Blue Demon, I also rise uh, to support this resolution. Uh, I love the fact that we have a diverse student representation here with us today, because that what that is what DePaul University was for me, a place to go and learn, uh, a place to go and grow mostly uh, into the human being that I still am becoming. Um, it, it's not lost upon me, Madam Chair and colleagues, that DePaul University is the largest Catholic university in the country. It's a place where not only do people practice diverse faiths, even though it's a Catholic institution? I, re I recall uh, uh, my religion class was taught by uh, uh, a Jewish rabbi. Um, it's a place where we come together, learn from people throughout the world, uh, and become a better society because of it. I'm very proud to be associated with you, Paul, to this day, and I'm very proud to be associated with this fine resolution. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman. Any other members of the body that wish to speak before I go to? Alderman, uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Burke. Thank you, Madam President and ladies and gentlemen of the council. I too am a proud blue demon. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to acknowledge my gratitude to the uh, Vincentians and to the largest Catholic university in 
America. I'm an undergrad uh, class of 1965 and law school 68. My wife is a uh, graduate of DePaul. Uh, our daughter, Sarah, is a graduate of DePaul Law School. And our son, Travis, just recently graduated. Uh, and we're so uh, grateful to the Vincentians for establishing the university here in, in Chicago 125 years ago. Uh, what a proud uh, uh, institution and, uh, and also great uh, source of athletic uh, pride. Uh, I was there back in the days of uh, Ray Meyer uh, when uh, DePaul's men's team uh, contested on the national level uh, each and every year. And it was so great that the university recognized Coach Meyer uh, with the beautiful statute that uh, graces the campus. Campus is far different than it was all those uh, years ago in the 1960s. Um, and the growth of the campus under Father Holschneider was just truly uh, remarkable. Uh, and congratulations, too, to the new president of the university. Um, it really, um, as Alderman Rodriguez uh, mentioned, provided uh, generations of Chicagoans the opportunity to receive a college education. So many uh, of those graduates uh, were first-time um, college students, first in their families to go to college. and. Uh, I too uh, want to say how important it was to have the Knight Law School. I was a product of the Knight Law School, as was John Stroger uh, in those days, and uh, so many other uh, leaders of Chicago who went on to accomplish remarkable things in the tradition of the proud Vincentian uh, policies. So. Uh, Congratulations uh, to the university, to those students who are here and are carrying on that uh, great Vincentian uh, tradition. Uh, God bless and good luck. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman Burke. Any others? Yes, Alderman Hopkins, the chair recognizes. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I too rise in support of this resolution and uh, ask to be associated with it uh, <laughs> in honor of DePaul University, which uh, is not currently in my ward, but under the new map, actually, I will have a small portion uh, of the DePaul campus will be uh, added to the second ward. And I think in, in many ways, uh, DePaul and the city of Chicago grew up together. Uh, DePaul really does personify the uh, spirit of an urban campus. You are not just resident in the city, you are woven into the fabric of the city of Chicago. Uh, and as we've heard from so many Blue Demon alumni here, um, you know, you're one of the preferred schools for Chicago residents. But when you bring people here to Chicago, when students come from rural states or from the uh, Western states, uh, they always talk about their introduction to the city of Chicago as DePaul students. They know that their experience uh, really typifies uh, the, the true Chicagoan uh, lifestyle. So many of your graduates choose to stay here in Chicago um, after they complete their studies. And that's a testament to the student lifestyle that you provide for them and the outstanding education um, that DePaul has provided for so many years. Um, and I do have to say one thing, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, late lamented demon dogs, you can't get one of those anymore, Alderman Abarca, but you can get a sandwich at Broncos. Believe it or not, they just reopened uh, after a hiatus during the uh, pandemic. So we'll, we'll be talking more about them in a, in a future meeting, but uh, they're also a part of DePaul history um, and, a, and a very uh, very cherished part of student life at DePaul. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for presenting this to us, Alderman Knudsen. Uh, I'm proud to support this resolution. Any other members of the body that wish to speak to this resolution? Sure, Thank you so much, Madam President. Um, I rise in strong support of this resolution. I couldn't be more proud in the 43rd Ward to be the home ward to DePaul. You know, DePaul is a university at its core values that stands for diversity, equity, inclusion, and public service. I've found this in all the students that I've spoken with as aldermen. You know, we've, we've had people in chambers. I've, I've met with the, 
the DePaul Dems a few times, and I can't wait for this relationship to strengthen going forward, but also through so many friends who went through DePaul and just how they're leading their lives. They totally stick to those core values. Um, DePaul also invests a lot in the ward. You know, it's a citywide institution, but we also just have a strong community partnership that leads to our 43rd ward being safer and having a lot of incredible academic work happen within our boundaries, which I think is so important. It brings a lot of people to the ward. Um, and I, I, I truly thank you all for that. I want to say to President Manuel, I, I can't wait to work more with you going forward. I always joke with you that the first time when I was had gotten appointed and read my, my we were going to meet and I read really fast, I was like, why am I meeting with Rahm Emanuel about DePaul? Um, but it's President Rob Emanuel. And it's very confusing. Uh, <laughs> but again, I thank you. I think DePaul is such an amazing institution. I also want to say, as someone who grew up in a town with a university or college that was called one of the most, one of the least LGBTQ friendly universities in the country, DePaul is consistently one of the most LGBTQ friendly universities in the country. Um, and that goes to its core values to a T. So again, thank you. I'm looking forward to continuing to partner. I obviously stand in support <clears throat> of this resolution. And let me brag a little bit about facts you may or may not know about the DePaul. <clears throat> Alderman Burke is correct that it has a long tradition of, of sports, but it also has a long tradition of service, of which we are proud. It is absolutely one of the greatest uh, assets that we have uh, in this city. And ladies and gentlemen, every year, there are about 200,000 undergrads and graduate students that come to the city of Chicago um, that populate our great colleges and universities. And DePaul really focuses on making sure that those homegrown students have a safe and welcoming place to pursue uh, their academic uh, interests. For the last 125 years, DePaul University has contributed greatly to our city's culture, vibrancy, and our status as one of the greatest cities in the world. Its rankings and accolades span across sports, business and technology programming, and the arts and communication ed education. This accessible and high quality education has launched the careers of more than 120,000 DePaul alumni who live and work in Chicago. That's a tremendous accomplishment about which we should all be proud. From our smallest entrepreneurial businesses to our largest corporations, from healthcare and government institutions to nonprofit and community organization, DePaul, fingerprints and <clears throat> leadership is involved in all of that. Furthermore, DePaul proudly boasts diversity as a strength with 47% of the 2021 first year class being students of color, one third being first generation college students and 32% being eligible for low income Pell Grants. By being rooted in faith, DePaul also demonstrates a commitment to service, learning, and community involvement, ensuring that its students and educators are also um, reflecting the diversity of the communities um, of our city. And that is per per perhaps best demonstrated through DePaul Center for Community Health Equity, co-founded with Rush to improve community health outcomes in our city. The city of Chicago is aligned with the mission of DePaul. And I'm grateful for DePaul's work and partnership to delim eliminate health inequities. So today's resolution says it best. The futures of DePaul University and the city of Chicago are inseparable and intertwined. And since DePaul's founding, the city and the university have enjoyed a strong, mutually beneficial relationship, which I have been happy to support and to continue during my tenure as mayor. So in recognition of DePaul Day, and our 125 years of partnership, I'm honored to present this resolution and extend council's best wishes for DePaul's continued growth um, and prosperity. I will also say thank you for associating yourself with a certain high school in uh, Alderman Martin's ward. I have a vested interest in that high school's success. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and applaud DePaul University. <laughs> up, ladies and gentlemen. We have a resolution sponsored by <clears throat> one of the biggest Simeon supporters in the world, Alderman David Moore. We are honoring 
Simeon and Mount Carmel for their success on the athletic field in the fall. Come on in, folks. Okay. Alderman Mitchell. Okay. Madam you, uh, I move for temporary you have a motion to suspend the, yes. Yes, Madam Chair, I move for temporary suspension of rules, these resolutions. Hearing no objections, so ordered. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the box we have Malik Elzey, who's a student athlete at Simeon, uh, Dante Colbreff, who's a coach at Simeon, and the great uh, Trista Harper, who's a president at Simeon. From, <clears throat> and Kendall Moore, who's a student athlete at Simeon. From Mount Carmel, we have Scott Tabernacki, the principal, Mark Antonetti, the coach, uh, Blaney Dowley, a student, Asher Tomaszewski, also a student, uh, Demarion Arrington, <clears throat> a student, Eddie Fleck, <coughs> a student, and Owen Schickel, also a student athlete. Are there any members of the body that wish to speak to uh, this resolution? Alderman Moore, I'll hold you in reserve. Anyone, anyone would like to speak and celebrate these champions? The chair recognizes Alderman uh, O'Shea. Thank you, Madam President. I proudly rise in support of this resolution. I'd like to start off by congratulating the coaches and players from Simeon. Next, I'd like to talk about Mount Carmel High School. As many of you may or may not know, I am a proud graduate of Mount Carmel in four years. Mount Carmel has been providing education and teaching young men since 1900. 123 years, they have been in the Woodlawn community. They stayed in the Woodlawn community when everyone else was running away 50 years ago. 600 boys attend Mount Carmel. During their time there, they will be taught how to be men, how to be leaders, how to be strong, develop more character. Now today they're being honored for four their 14th state championship in football, which is something everybody should be proud of. Congratulations, guys. I think it's just important to note about how these young men have been taught in their experiences these past four years at Mount Carmel, how to go off in the world and be leaders and stand up for people and be a voice. You guys are very lucky. Your parents had a lot of options and they chose Mount Carmel. I'd also like to recognize Mr. Scott Tabernacki, a 2002 graduate of Mount Carmel who serves as a principal and my dear friend from the 19th Ward, Mark Antonetti, a 1984 graduate of Mount Carmel. I'd like to add, 39 years ago, Mark Antonetti was a student athlete across the country as a graduate from Mount Carmel. Scott and Mark are leaders at the school. They serve in, in administrative roles and they also teach these young men. I couldn't be more proud to stand in support of this resolution, but more importantly, I couldn't be more proud to be a graduate of Mount Carmel High School. Thank you. Ren O'Shea, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Haddon. Thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you all for joining us this morning. To Mount Carmel, to Simeon, we're very proud of you. Your city's proud of you. Um, not everybody uh, gets the opportunity to be a student athlete. I think athletics provides such an opportunity for us to build ourselves, our community, um, but also to encounter challenges and persevere. Um, I know I participated in student athletics. It's something in the Rogers Park community where I serve that we work to promote. Um, you're serving your community by participating in this in addition to serving yourself. Um, your city's proud of you. We love to see you excel. Um, so for Mount Carmel and for Simeon, thank you for being here. Thank you for continuing. Thank you for being winners. Thank you for being successful. 
and I wish you the best as you continue on your personal and team journeys. Thank you, Alderman Manhattan. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Hairston. Thank you, Madam President, members of the City Council. I too rise in support of this resolution. Um, having been familiar with both uh, schools for <laughs> yeah, long, long time. <laughs> Um, what, what I can say is that uh, the programs in your school have been consistently excellent over the years. Um, back in the day when I was in high school, um, I couldn't go to Mount Carmel to compete uh, because it was an all-boys school, and I was one of the first girls to join a lab school swim team and the boys swim team because there was no girl swim team. Um, and so um, what I do know is Simeon and Mount Carmel turn out fine, excellent individuals, uh, not only in the education that they receive, but in the way that you all represent your schools. It is not just now, but your representation goes on forever. And all of the legacies of Mount Carmel and Simeon are here in the world for all to see. Congratulations. Thank you, Alderwoman. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Spazzato. Excuse me. Thank you, Madam President. I too support the resolution. Being a big sports fan, I am a Northwest side sports fan, that is. I always admire Simeon and Mount Carmel. They're two, I only follow them for, for their for athletic, unbelievable athletes they have in both of those schools. Um, I believe Simeon has a, a major stud on the football team this year that's going to U of I, I think. You have a um, they have countless kids going to Division I schools, and I love following local kids uh, doing great and doing well. Um, I'm more on, a, more on the sports and not the academic and uh, Matt, so sorry with that. So, um, But just wish you guys the best. You make the city proud. And I have one question, Madam President, if I may, if I may ask my two colleagues, Alderman O'Shea and Alderman Moore, city championship, Simeon, Wosmar, Conroe, who's going to win the game, guys? <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Alderman Spizzato. The chair recognizes Alderman Kim Quinn. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would be remiss not to stand and um, offer my words of support and um, congratulations. I'm a St. Rita High School graduate. And um, I think we're, we're getting close to Simeon in basketball. Not yet, but we're getting close. Um, and for Mount Carmel, um, we're not there yet at all. But the, the importance of uh, what Simeon and Mount Carmel mean to the city, um, you, pro you provide uh, excellence. Um, you're not only on the state of Illinois stage, but you're on the national stage. Uh, and you represent the city in a very, very good manner. So uh, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Um, it's good to see you, Mark. Uh, thank you for everything you do as well. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, uh, Alderman Quinn. The chair recognizes Alderman Brookings. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I, I, I stand in, in support of this resolution to Mount Carmel. Congratulations, kudos. I did not go to Mount Carmel. I went to Mendel, so it's hard for me to really say that to you all. But Simeon, it, it, you all have always been a powerhouse since I was a kid. Uh, you have one of the best coaches from Mendel who coached at Mount Carmel for a long time. Uh, but Simeon and Principal Harper and Coach, I've watched countless of wins from Simeon. You have made me and David and the entire South Side proud of what you all have been able to accomplish at Simeon. And uh, we just want you all to keep on keeping on uh, and, and strive for excellence, both of you all, both of your schools. And we really are proud of you all. So thank you all for what you all have done. Thank you, Alderman Brookings. The chair recognizes Alderwoman Lee. Thank you, Madam President. I also rise in support of this resolution. Uh, to, to all of the young men and the group coaches sitting in the box, uh, just to echo all, what all of my colleagues have said, thank you so much for what you do for this city and how you represent this city. Uh, we know in the national news, we don't always have positive stories, um, but you are one bright shining part of that. Um, and I thank you for it because you bring communities together and you give us something to be proud of. I know in my community in the 11th Ward that the Mount Carmel pride runs very deep. 
Um, I see signs all over the place. I know people are at football games all the time. Um, and I thank you for that because you are continuing a long tradition um, of uh, pride and citizenship um, and just doing good things in the community and becoming strong leaders in ours. Um, I, and to the coaches, thank you for all that you do um, to turn out all of these great young men and women uh, at your schools, not just in these programs, but it does extend to the school community and the entire city. So thank you on behalf of all of us in the 11th Ward for all that you guys are contributing. Thank you, Alderman Lee. The chair recognizes Alderman Irvin. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, again, congratulations to uh, both Simeon and uh, Mount Carmel High Schools. Just a point for the record, uh, the principal from Simeon is actually from the West Side. So you all that are always clowning on us on the west side principal harper came from manly high school and has done great work there as i'm sure that she's done at simeon but again congratulations trista and and the work that you're doing uh, out at simeon and not only the from the athletic aspect but from the academic aspect as well of the work that's being done to uh, help our young uh, men and women uh, on the south side of chicago but again we welcome you back with open arms when you decide to make that move God bless you. Thank you, Alderman. Anyone else who wishes to speak to uh, this resolution? The, older, uh, the chair recognizes Alderwoman Coleman. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chairman. Um, and to these great, great schools, uh, congratulations to both uh, Mount Carmel and Simeon. I love the diversity. We went from the north side at, uh, uh, at DePaul, and now we're on the south side. And for the record, the alderman of the 28th Ward went to high school on the south side at Morgan Park Academy. Let's not forget that, Chairman Irvin. So when, when the west side is ready to win championships, you all come this way. <laughs> oh, I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to take that dig, but it just happened. Uh, to Coach Dante and to Simeon, um, I just admire uh, the Alumni Association, the parents, just the vibe, the energy, and how you were a graduate of Simeon, and a lot of the um, teachers and, and leadership at Simeon mm. actually came back home, and it shows in the excitement and the rich legacy of just sportsmanship, and just overall, just a, such a great brand. I know so many of my peers and my residents from Inglewood that attended Simeon High School. So we are so godly proud of every accomplishment. Uh, we are rooting for you. I sit next to the Mr. Simeon over here and it truly is Simeon versus everybody. So congratulations to both Simeon and Mark Carmel. You make us so proud. Uh, you make our city proud and continue young people to make your parents and your, and your core and your foundation proud. Thank you, Alderwoman Coleman. Anyone else? Alderman Moore. Thank you, Madam President. First of all, Madam President, as uh, these schedules get busy and we get so many people to make so many requests, I want to thank you uh, for um, allowing us to honor um, both Mount Carmel and um, Simeon today because this, more than anything, is about our young people. Um, no matter what people are doing, campaign or anything like that, they're talking about what? Our young people, because it is gonna be our young people that continue to make the difference. And a lot of that comes, I don't care what sport you're looking at, swimming, lacrosse, um, tennis, golf, um, baseball, football, basketball, um, those skills are learned in sports and that's the greatest talent. Um, a lot of that great talent comes from the people who play sports and, and leaders and, and, and become leaders. First of all, Mount Carmel, um, it's, it's very rare that teams go undefeated. And it's very rare that teams go undefeated and win a state championship. So to you all, uh, really kudos and congratulations to you all. Many times um, we forget about our uh, Catholic schools. We uh, recognize our public schools a lot, but you all are part of the fabric of this city. And so I, I, I commend you all, Mark, thank you for answering the call um, to make sure these young men um, were down here, but more or less for leading them um, to a, a, a great success and um, a great championship. So kudos to you, uh, Mount Carmel. Now, my beloved Wolverines, my beloved Wolverines, God knows what Simeon means to me. I don't get to do a lot. I work a lot. My guilty pleasure is being at a Simeon football or basketball game. And that excites me. But before I get to this superstar that's sitting before us, Coach Dante, you are a true superstar. People may or may not know 
um, coach um, Dante Colbert um, played under the famous coach Al Scott, and he learned under him. And um, it was coach Al Scott that wanted to make sure that um, Dante was a coach and he's carried on um, that legacy. And so thank you, Dante, um, for um, continuing to carry on and bring that back. And Kendall, you played and then you came back to help. And so it's because when people come back, they don't forget where they came from. They come back and this is the best mentoring program that you can have. When you talk about what we're looking for, for nonviolence and violence prevention, this is it. And so I'm excited because you all came back and helped these young men. Now, Malik Elzey, brother, you are amazing. I, I did so much screaming. I lost my voice so many times um, screaming for you. You all are looking at an All-American. He played in the National, um, uh, um, what's it called? The National American Championship Bowl or something like that. All-American Championship Bowl. Y'all make some noise for him. Not many people get to um, play in the All-American Bowl. And, and this is um, um, players, the best players throughout the entire country. And you're looking at the best wide receiver to me in the country. And so what I'm excited about, I don't have to go far to watch him. He's going to Illinois, y'all. So he decided he committed to Illinois. He's going to Illinois after so many people recruited him. But like I said, we're raising good men to be leaders honor roll all four years, honor roll all four years. And that's due also to the leadership of our great principal, Trist Trista Harper. She was okay when she was on the West Side. She became great when she got to the South Side. And so um, thank you all so much, um, both Simeon and Malcolm, for giving us some great fun this season, for giving us some great entertainment, but also for giving us some great pride, not only in our city, but our entire state. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Alderman Moore. Let me rise and, and uh, of course, join um, this resolution, but I wanna tell you a little bit of details about these two teams. Um, CPS's Simeon Career Academy won the 2022 Chicago Public League Football Championship, and Mount Carmel, as you heard, won the 2022 IHSA 7A Illinois State Football Championship, something both schools should be enormously proud about. Um, Chicago, of course, is a sports city, and these teams really um, stand out um, in, the, in the history um, of sports teams and high school teams in particular. It says a lot about, I think, um, not only the coaching and the commitment, but also about the quality of the young men that are populating both of these teams. Um, at the high school level, we know there has to be incredible perseverance, determination, and talent leading these players uh, to success. Not only did each team win their respective championship, but they were winning team throughout their season. Mount Carmel was undefeated. And as Alderman Moore says, that is an incredible accomplishment across all the incredible competition that you face, that you went 14 and 0, kudos to you gentlemen, quite an accomplishment. And Simeon finished their season 12 and one, also an incredible accomplishment. The greatness of these players, their coaches and the school communities rallying behind them is clear. Some of you knew I grew up in a small town in a different state, but we were a high school and continue to be high school football power. So I know a little bit about high school football. But importantly, what I know of both Mark Carmel and Simeon is tremendous school communities. From the principal on down to the coaches, the teachers, everyone is united and pulling for these young people to make sure that they are successful. Our children are absolutely a product of the adult ecosystem around them. And the fact that you have uh, excelled over and over and over again not just on the athletic, athletic field, but in academics as well, really is a testament to that ecosystem around you. And the fact of the pride of the alumni, um, not only um, out in the community, but coming back to each of the schools to contribute in meaningful ways, that says something that you've got something special in each and every one of these schools. Now I know Mount Carmel less, but I will also say Principal Harper, who we've had a lot of conversations, Sometimes on good days, sometimes on tough days. 
Um, but I just also want to personally thank you for everything you do, hanging in there and making sure these kids have a great, safe, nurturing environment in which to learn. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a testament to, I think the greatness um, and examples of the quality of our high schools all across the city. CPS, um, certainly Catholic and archdiocese schools, private schools. These are the kids that have to stay in Chicago and recognize that their future and their fates are intertwined with our city. And we are so pleased to be celebrating you um, here today. So thank you all very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Simeon and Mal Carmel. <laughs> gentlemen, our final resolution is one brought to us by um, your colleague, Alderwoman Deb Silverstein, um, memor uh, in memory of um, uh, Holocaust Survivors Day. Alderman Silverstein, any other members of the body that wish to speak to this resolution before we have Alderman Silverstein speak? Anyone? 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 The floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. I stand in support of this resolution. Friday, January 27th, will mark 78 years since the Soviet army liberated the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp, freeing more than 6,000 prisoners. We commemorate this event with Holocaust Remembrance Day, a day to remember those who died in the horrors of the Holocaust and to honor those who survived to rebuild. Once again, we join together around the globe with one voice and say, never again. Never again will we allow evil to overcome good and hate to overcome kindness and decency. Tragically, anti-Semitism is on the rise. Anti-Semitic incidences increased by 430% in Illinois between 2016 and 2021, according to the Anti-Defamation League. And locally, hate crimes were up 71% in 2022, according to the Chicago Commission on Human Relations. The most frequent targets are Jewish residents. This must stop. Now we must be more vigilant than ever against attacks on the dignity and welfare of Jews and on all ethnic and religious groups. As the alderman of Chicago's 50th ward, I represent the largest Jewish community in the state of Illinois. I can assure you that the Holocaust Remembrance Day is very real for the residents of the 50th ward, and it's very real for the survivors. I'm grateful to my colleagues here today who have signed on to this resolution and join with me to honor the memory of those who died in the Holocaust and to honor those who survived to share their experiences and wisdom with the world. Never again. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Silverstein, and thank you for bringing us uh, before the body. Um, I stand in strong and full support of this resolution. Ladies and gentlemen, you know this, but there are too many incidences of hate that are popping up all across our city. We have to be better than this. We have to make sure that we stamp out hate wherever we see it. And we have to denounce the people who are propagating uh, the hate. So again, thank you Alderman Silverstein for reminding us not only of our responsibility uh, to remember and never forget the horrible tragedy of the Holocaust, but to make sure that we are diligent every day and calling out hate where we see it and uniting together to stamp it out. So thank you, Alderman. Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I move passage of these resolutions in the omnibus. Hearing no objections, so ordered. I, I now move we return to the regular order of business. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, communications. Communica Madam Clerk. Oh. Communications from Her Honor, the Mayor, to the Honorable, the City Council of the City of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the issuance of financial assistance for MHL2 Prairie District Apartments Development. Your favorable considerations of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here an ordinance authorizing the issuance of financial assistance for the 43rd and Green Phase Development or Green Phase 2 development. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Finance. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of a TIF redevelopment agreement with American Blues Theater for the development of a vacant property located at 5627 North Lincoln Avenue. Your favorite consideration this, consideration this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Assets, Information, and Services are transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of an IGA with the Public Buildings Commission regarding accessibility work on city facilities. In the favor consideration of this ordinance would be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Budget Director are transmit here with a Fund 9 925 Amendment. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance would be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the negotiated sale of a city-owned property located at 5036-5044 South Prairie Avenue at 5050 Prairie LLC. Fable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, at the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with ordinances authorizing the sale of city-owned properties under the Adjacent Neighbors Land Acquisition Program. Your favorable consideration of this ordinances will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of Commissioner of Planning and Redevelopment, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing uh, quit claim deeds transferred of a city-owned property located at 1733 North Francisco Avenue to adjacent neighbors. Your favorite consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Community Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Transportation, I transmit here with together Alderman Riley Hopkins, Espada, Martin Vasquez, the Smart Street Pilots Ordinance. Your favorite consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Community on Pedestrian Traffic Safety. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of Commissioner of Public Health, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Park District for the installation of weather stations and air monitors. In favor of consideration of this ordinance, we appreciate it. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee of Special Events, Cultural Affairs, and Recreation. I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, hereby inform the City Council that the following documents were filed in my office relating to the respective subjects designated as follows. Notification of sale of City of Chicago General Obligation Bond Series 2023A, Chicago Works and General Obligation Bond Series 2023B, Chicago Recovery Plan. Funding loan notification of City of Chicago Multifamily Housing Revenue Note Series 2022A Auburn Gresham Apartments and the Office of Inspector General Audit Report on Department of Planning and Development Administration of Neighborhood Opportunity Fund Small Grants Program. Office of Inspector General's quarterly report for period ended December 31st, 2022, and comprehensive annual financial report for City Colleges of the City of Chicago fiscal year ended June 2020 I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, also informed the City Council that all those matters which were considered by the City Council at the regular meeting held on December 14, 2022, and were required by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form, or one on one more newspapers were published in pamphlet form on January 18, 2023, by being printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the Journal of Proceedings of the City Council of City of Chicago. I, City Clerk Valencia, also informed the City Council that the ordinances authorizing the imposition of tax levies, approval of budgets, and execution of service provider agreements for special service areas numbers. 1-2015, 3, 8, 10, 13, 17, 20, 22, 24, 27, 28, 20, 2014, 33, 39, 42, 47, 48, 50, 52, 2021, 59, 2022, 56, 2022, 62, 62, 63, 72, 73, 76, 77, and 880, which were passed by the City Council December 14, 2022, and were requested to be published in special pamphlet form, which were published in special pamphlet form on December 16, 2022. Jeez. I, City Clerk Valencia, also transmit here with the following miscellaneous communications and reports requiring City Council action, zoning rule classification of particular areas, which referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, Building Standards, claims against the City of Chicago, which referred to the Committee on Finance, recommendation by Commission on Chicago Landmarks for designation, a Pioneer Arcade in 1535 North Pulaski Road as Chicago Landmark, which referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Your Honor, that concludes the reports and communications from the Mayor and other City Officers. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, committee reports. Uh, Chairman Wegesback, Finance Committee. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Reporting for the City Council's Committee on Finance, which met on January 12, 2023, item one is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute an amendment of original sales tax securitization agreement with Encuentro Square 2 LP, Encuentro Square 2 GP, LLC, Enquentro Square SLP LLC for additional funding agreements incorporating tax increment financing assistance in the amount of $9 million for an affordable housing project at 1800 to 1840 North Hamlin Avenue, 1821 to 1857 North Hamlin, 3735 to 3750 West Cortland Street, and 1820 to 1856 North Ridgeway Avenue 
in the 26th ward. Unless there is someone wishing to speak, I move to concur with the committee's favorable recommendation by a roll call vote. Roll call vote has been called for. <clears throat> yes. Please make sure you're logged into your device and hit submit. The vote is now open. If you have an issue, please raise your hand. Which one is it? 40, 12. Is the vote open? Yeah. Alderman Scott, I see you. We're coming. Alderman Harrison, Alderman Mitz, we're coming. Christina Harrison. I will now call a roll call vote. If you have not voted, Alderman Hopkins, not present. Alderman King, not present. Alderman Harrison, uh, or yes, yes. Alderman Harrison is present and yes. Alderman Taylor. Oh, just came through. Alderman Scott. Alderman Scott is a yes. Alderman Mitz. Mitz is a yes. That concludes the vote, and we are now closing the vote. <clears throat> All right, the yeas are 47, the nays are zero. Alderman Kappelman on the motion for reconsideration. Uh, Madam President, I move to reconsider the vote. All those in favor of the... Um, Motion for reconsideration signify by saying aye. All those opposed say nay. The nays have it. The motion for reconsideration fails. Chairman Wagus, back, back to you. Madam President, item number two <laughs> is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute a redevelopment agreement with C40 Preservation Associates LP, POAH, C40 LLC, Preservation of Affordable Housing Incorporated, and POAH. TIF LLC and the issuance of loan funding, tax credits, and tax increment financing assistance in the amount of $6.5 million for development of low income housing and commercial space at 3137 to 3157 West Fifth Avenue and 209 South Kedzie Avenue in the 28th Ward. Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance Report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item three is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute the 63rd amending agreement with Summer Core Incorporated to extend the program to the LaSalle Central Redevelopment Tax Increment Financing TIF Redevelopment Project Area, increase funding, amend the Small Business Improvement Fund or SPIF program rules, and continue with Summer Core Incorporated as the provider of administrative services. Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance Report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item four is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute a redevelopment agreement with M Hub Support Corporation and M Hub for acquisition and rehabilitation of the facility at 240 North Ashland Avenue, augmented with eligible tax increment financing funds in the amount of $17,550,000 uh, located in the 27th Ward. Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance Report and corresponding on successful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. 
Item five is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute the designation of amendment number one and the expanded Madden Wells redevelopment project area as a redevelopment project area pursuant to tax increment allocation redevelopment act. If there's no one wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the committee on finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item number six is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute the approval of amendment number one to the Madden Wells redevelopment project area, redevelopment plan for expansion of the project area. If there's no one wishing to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the committee on finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Item seven is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute adoption of the tax increment allocation financing for amendment number one to the redevelopment plan for the expanded Madden Wells redevelopment project area. And Madam President, I just wanna note that we have three items in each one of these TIFs. So if people are hearing what sounds like the same thing, they're actually separate votes. Thank you. Um, so if there's no one wishing to speak on this item, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Item eight is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute the designation of amendment number six in the expanded Bronzeville redevelopment project area as a redevelopment area pursuant to tax increment allocation redevelopment act. If there's no one wishing to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so will. Item nine is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute approval of amendment number six to the Bronzeville redevelopment project area, redevelopment plan for expansion of the project area. Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number 10 is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute adoption of the tax increment allocation financing for amendment number six to provide tax increment allocation financing for the enlarged Bronzeville redevelopment project area Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item 11 is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute the designation of amendment number three in the expanded 43rd Cottage Grove redevelopment project area as a redevelopment project area pursuant to the Tax Increment Allocation Redevelopment Act. Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. There are no objections, so ordered. Item 12 is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute approval of amendment number three to the 43rd Cottage Grove Redevelopment Plan for expansion of the project area. I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. There are no objections, so ordered. Item 13 is a communication recommending a proposed ordinance regarding the authority to enter into and execute approval of the adoption of the tax increment allocation financing for amendment number three to the redevelopment plan for the expanded 43rd Cottage Grove redevelopment project. Unless someone wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item 14 is a report of cases in which judgments or settlements were entered into for the month of December 2022, which will be placed on file with the clerk. Items 15 and 16 consist of authorizations for the payment of various small claims against the city and denials of payment of various small claims against the city. Unless there's an objection, I ask these items be placed on the omnibus. There no objection. Go order. And item 17 consists of authorizations for the issuance of charitable solicitation or tag day permits for the Mercy Home for boys and girls, uh, March 1st through 31st, 2023. And if there's no objection, I ask that these items be placed on the omnibus. 
There are no objections to order. Madam President, that concludes the report of the Committee on Finance. Thank you, Chairman Wag is back. Yes, the chair recognizes um, Alderman Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I request to have uh, my yes vote added to the first favorable roll call of finance and a no vote on the unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Thank you. So noted for the record. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the Committee on Budget and Government Operations, Chairman Dow. Uh, thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Reporting for your committee on the budget and government operations, which held a committee meeting on January 13th, 2023, the committee recommends passage of the following item, an ordinance concerning an amendment to the annual appropriation ordinance year 2022 within fund number 925 of the Chicago Police Department. I move passage of this item by the most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. This concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Dow. Next up, the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology, Chairman Villegas. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Reporting for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, which met on Tuesday, January 10th, the committee held an in-person meeting and recommends passage of the following items. The first item on the agenda is the reappointment of Charles Newsom to Special Service Area Number 61, Hyde Park Commission, located but introduced by Mayor Lightfoot at the December 14th, 2022 City Council meeting. I move for pass of this reappointment by the first favorable roll call for the vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item two is an ordinance in support of a Class 6B tax incentive for property located at 4917 South Kedzie. 4815 South Kedzie Avenue and 4837 South Kedzie Avenue in the 14th Ward, introduced by Mayor Lightfoot during the December 14, 2022 City Council me meeting. I move for pass of this item by the first favorable roll call vote, of the Committee on Finance and the Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Very no objection, so ordered. The last item on the agenda was a very informative subject matter hearing where no vote was taken by the committee members. Specifically, the hearing concerned the goals, plan, and approach to the annual and five-year capital improvement programs and discuss an overview of the programs with those leading its development in addition to the departments with the most funds being utilized. Vice Chairman Mitchell, ECD committee members, and I would like personally thank every city department that participated and contributed to the hearing's success. Deborah Ritzberg of the Inspector General of the City, City of Chicago Office of Inspector General, Jenny Bennett, Chief Financial Officer, Susie Park, Budget Director, Sandra Blakemore, Commissioner of AIS, Tom Carney, CDOT, Andrew Velasquez, Aviation, Andrew Chang, uh, Water Department. We look forward to continuing these important conversations concerning the Capital Improvement Program in partnership with the departments. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up, the Committee on Environment Protection and Energy, uh, Vice Chair Nugent and members of the City Council reporting for your Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy, which held a remote meeting on January 6, 2023. The Committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following. Items 1 through 6 were a series of appointments to the Urban Forestry Advisory Board. They are Jessica Vogt, James Simelka, Cindy Schwab, Daniela Perea, Nuri Medina, Rolanda Favela. Unless anyone wishes to speak to these appointments, I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, this concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, next up, the Committee on Health, um, Alderman Sawyer. You want me to pass you? The Committee on Health and Human Relations. Chairman Sawyer. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, members of the City Council, reporting for your Committee on Health and Human Relations was held a remote meeting on January 9th, 2023. The committee recommends passage of the following items. The first is approval of 02022-3993, amendment of the Municipal Code Chapters 2-120, 5-8, 6-10, 6-100 and 6-120 regarding prohibitive discrimination against bodily autonomy with exceptions for certain religious organizations. I move passage of the first item by the most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. There are no objections, so ordered. The second item is approval of R2022-3993, 
1417 in support of Iranian citizens' human rights movement and encouragement of United Nations Human Rights Council intervention regarding human rights suppression. I move passage of this item by the first favor roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Third item is approval of R2022-332. Call for recognition of Roberto Clemente's place of death in Luisa, Puerto Rico on the National Register of Historic Places. I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. That concludes my report. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up, the Committee on Housing um, and Real Estate, Chairman Osterman. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Reporting for your Committee on Housing and Real Estate, which held a remote meeting on January 10th, 2023, the committee has a series of reports recommending the following. Item number one is an ordinance com commemorating 5708 Northridge Avenue is Marion Jean Kennedy Vellini Plaza in the 48th Ward. This community green space in Edgewater is to remember a transformative community and citywide leader, Marion Vellini. Marion Vellini was a third alderman, alder woman in the city of Chicago and a trailblazer for future women that were to seek public office. She served our city at a very challenging time and was a trusted and strong ally of Mayor Harold Washington. In everything that she did, she brought people together in our community and our city. Her work in the 70s and in the 80s in our community has been the foundation for a lot of the positive success that we see in the 48th Ward today. Um, I ask for and move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call of the community on finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. But before I also, I want to recognize her family. Uh, many of you know Mike, her son, Mike Vellini, who's with us today, and her grandson, uh, Michael Vellini, daughter, Emily Vellini, Marcy Landis, and the rest of the Vellini clan, Monica and, and Mimi. Thank you. Objections to order. Item number two is a sale of city owned property at 4232 South Wells Street to Maria Teresa Dominguez under the ANLAP program in the third ward. I make the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Item three is an amendment to the ordinance to correct the bidder's address for the sale of city owned property at 5952 South Loomis Boulevard under the ANLAP program of the 16th Ward. I make the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Item four is a lease agreement to Cumberland Acquisition LLC for office and parking space um, at 5440 North Cumberland Avenue uh, that will serve as a um, Chicago Police Department EAP office. Um, to serve those men and women in the uh, Chicago Police Department and Fire Department. I make the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Item five was the housing report that we reported the um, 2022 Q3 housing reports. Um, I also, before I conclude my report, want to um, remind or let members of the council know that on Tuesday, the 24th, next Tuesday at 10 a.m., we'll have a subject matter hearing with CHA and CHA's leadership. Um, to talk about um, all things CHA. So that will be an in-person meeting here in the committee or in the council chambers. All are welcome. If there are particular issues you'd like to cover, uh, please contact me or my staff. Um, but beyond that, Madam Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Osterman. 10 a.m. Tuesday. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, next up, the Committee on License and Consumer Protection, Alderwoman Mitz. Thank you, Madam President. I'm reporting for the Committee on Licensing and Consumer Protection. We held a meeting on January the 9th, 2023. The following items were passed by the committee. Item number 02022-1756, a substitute ordinance to amend the Municipal Code of Chicago regarding requirements for prohibiting is issuing of additional retail tobacco license. Alderman Napolitano and others. I move that the city council concur in the recommendation of the license finance committee by the same roll license committee as the same roll call voted as item number one of the committee on finance and the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Objection so ordered. 
I was four ordinance regarding moratoriums in the 21st Ward, the 40th Ward, 45th Ward, and the 47th Ward. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number 02022-3989 was an ordinance to amend Chapter 4-8 and 17-9 of the Municipal Code of Chicago regarding license requirements when define, defining an urban farm, farm and accessory building. This matter will refer to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. I move passage of these items by the same motion. There's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. That concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you, Chairman Mitz. Next up, the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, uh, Chairman Burnett. Thank you, Madam President. Reporting for your Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, for which a meeting was held on Thursday, J January 12th, 2023. Before the committee, there were 180 items. There were 179 routine items that passed and one routine item that did not pass. If there's no objections, I move for the passage of these ordinances in the omnibus. That concludes my report. Thank you. There are no objections, so ordered. Next up, the Committee on Transportation and Public Way, Chairman Brookins. Hey, good morning, Madam President. Reporting on your Committee for Transportation and Public Way, a meeting which was held on November 10th, 2022 and January 12th, 2023. The following ordinances were passed by a majority of the members present. Uh, number one on page two, we had the Kimball, and I'm gonna just read this one out, the Kimball Area Curb Management and Mobility. And then on uh, page two, the second item on that page, we had the North Fork Southern Railway of which Alderman Taylor, Bill, Irving, Harrison, Harris, Burnett, Curtis, Dow, Moore, Rodriguez, Cicho, Lopez, Haddon, Vasquez, Coleman, and Rosa are asking that that be deferred and published. Deferred and published. I'm sorry? The matter will be deferred and published. Thank you. Uh, next, <laughs> we have on page three, one uh, on page. But Chairman, one moment. <clears throat> So I'll read it out. The one we're deferring and publish is 02022-2395. Does that help, Jeff? That one will be deferred and published. That's what that is correct. Just that Did one. you also call um, 3939? Nine, right. That is not being deferred and published. Okay. The Kimball Station <laughs> area curb management mobility is not being deferred and published. And did Only 02022 29 I'm sorry, that's 2395. Is that straight, Jeff? I, I, do you move passage? I, I'm sorry, I move passage of the Kimball Station area curb management with the last most favorable roll call vote on the vote on finance and the unsuccessful vote to reconsider. All right, hearing no objections, so order. All right. Then next we have on page three includes one ordinances for grants of privilege introduced by the local alderman from uh, the fourth ward. On page four and five include 15 ordinances for miscellaneous items introduced by the alderman from wards two, nine through 11, 27, 33, 36, 38, 47, and 48. On page six includes two vacation ordinances located in the fifth and 34th wards. Your Honor, if there are no objections, we move passage of all of these items except for the item that was deferred and published by the last most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. I hear you no objections, so ordered. That concludes my report. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Chairman. Last committee hearing. Um, our committee report, Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, Chairman Tunney. Madam President and members of the City Council presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, which held a meeting on January 17, 2023. Reports are grouped for convenience. The following items were passed by the majority of members present. Page one contains the appointment of Brian Sanchez as chair and continuing member of the Zoning Board of Appeals to run concurrent with his current term as a member. 
I move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Page one also contains the reappointment of Andre Broomfeld as a member of the Chicago Plan Commission for a term effective immediately and expiring January 25th of 2028. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Page one also contains the reappointment of Sarah E. Lyons as a member of Chicago Plan Commission for a term effective immediately and expiring January 25th of 2028. Move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Page one also contains document number 02022-3941, the amendment of application number 21090 to correct the boundary description regarding the zoning reclassification located at 2833 West 47th Street, 2949, I'm sorry, 2749 through 2757, 2749 through 2745, all on West 47th Street and 4717 through 4723 South California Avenue. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. No objection, so ordered. Page one also contains document number 02022-3785, which contains amendments to ordinance number SO 2022-2000. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Page one through 11 contains various map amendments in the first, third, fourth, 11th, 12th, 20th, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 38th, 40th, 42nd, 43rd. I'll come back to that one in a sec. Or there's multiple in 43, but uh, motions in 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 49, and 50th wards. I do want to note that in the 43rd ward, document number 02022 3878, uh, there is a no vote by Alderman Hopkins in that issue in the 43rd ward. Otherwise, I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. I'm noting the objection of uh, Alderman Hopkins um, and no other objections so ordered. Page 12 contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade in the 11th, 14th, 23rd, 27th, 42nd, and 45th wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. There are no objections so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Chairman Tunney. <clears throat> Next up, uh, matters on the agreed calendar, Chairman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. I've received from the city clerk, Andrea M. Valencia, a total of 126 items proposed for the agreed calendar, consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, and tributary resolutions from the following aldermen, Alderman Dow, Alderman King, Alderman Hairston, Alderman Sawyer, Alderman Harris, Alderman Lee, Alderman Quinn, Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Coleman, Alderman Curtis, Alderman O'Shea, Alderman Tavares, Alderman Gardner, and Alderman Kappelman. And I move the passage of the agreed calendar and the omnibus. Uh, hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, new business. Uh, the clerk will call the wards beginning with the first. Mr. Clerk. Claims fee permit selection fee exemptions, which are referred to the Committee on Finance. Zoning amendments, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs, which are referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants of privilege on and over the public way, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. An exemption from the physical barrier requirement for commercial driveway alley access to parking facilities, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Lespada has proposed ordinance for issuance of permits for signed signboards at 1914 West Chicago Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Dowell has proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 3300 South Michigan Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Harris has proposed ordinance for dedication of public ways in the area bounded by East 93rd Street, South Greenwood Avenue, East 93rd Place, and South Drexel Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. 
Alman Solowski Garza has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code title nine by adding a new chapter 9-116 regarding deactivation rights for transportation network providers and third party delivery service network workers, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Lee has the proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Mike the Hot Dog Man Karajan Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Lee also has the proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Sylvia Toy Carajan Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Quinn has the proposed ordinance for renewal of designation of the 44th and 47th precincts of the 13th Ward as restricted residential zones prohibiting additional shared housing units and vacation rentals, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Coleman has the proposed order for an historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 6402 South Green Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond O'Shea and others have proposed orders for amendment of municipal code chapters 4-68 and 8-4 by adding new section 8-4-076 regarding assault against emergency workers, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Almond Rodriguez has a proposed ordinance for a vacation of portions of West 23rd Street and South Spalding Avenue within the area bounded by West 24th Street, South Christiana Avenue, West 22nd Street, and South Sawyer Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Tabaris has a proposed ordinance for designation of the 26th precinct of the 23rd Ward as a restricted cannabis zone prohibiting new or additional cultivation centers, craft growers, and processing, infuser, dispensing, and transportation organizations which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond DeBaris and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 2-84 by adding a new section 2-84-501 regarding parental leave within Chicago Police Department, which is, re which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Two committees having been called the Committee on Public Safety and the Committee on Committees and Rules. The matter is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Almond Scott has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package good licenses on portion of West Roosevelt Road, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Scott also has proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package good licenses on portion of West Harrison Street, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Cicho Lopez has proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as honorary Darius de Arco Teague Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almasicho Lopez also has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Felipe Phil Ayea Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. And a proposed order for the issuance of permit for signed signboard at 2332 West Cermak Road, and a proposed order for a sign signboard at 2332 West Cermak Road, which, is referred to, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Cito Lopez and Alderman Ramirez Rosa have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Title III, by adding a new section 3 20 entitled Employer's Expense Tax and Development Incentive Ordinance, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Two committees haven't been called the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations and the Committee on Committees and Rules. The matter is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Almond Cito Lopez and others have a proposed resolution to call for the investigation on legality of recent Cook County property tax increases and utilization of TIF funds for homeowners at risk of foreclosure or scavenger tax sale, which is referred to the Committee on Ethics and Government Oversight. Almond Cicho Lopez and others have proposed resolution to call for public hearings on Ponzi schemes significantly targeted towards Latino community and linked to U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission investigation, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Alman Cicho Lopez and others have proposed resolution to call for public hearings on rate hikes by ComEd and People's Gas filed with Illinois Commerce Commission, which is referred to the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy. Alman Telefiero and Alman Vasquez have proposed resolution to call for hearings on membership of Chicago Police Department members to the Oath Keepers Organization, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alman Wagaspak has proposed, has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Rodriguez Sanchez has proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 2923 North California Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Rodriguez Sanchez and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 17-7 by deleting figure 17-7-0570 and modifying section 17-7-0572 to include additional boundaries for additional dwelling units allowed areas, which are referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. 
Alderman Ramirez Rose has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of West Belmont Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alderman Ramirez Rosa also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code at section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portion of West, West Diversity Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alma Villegas has a proposed resolution to call for support of administration of economic census and encourage partnership maximizing economic census response rates, which is referred to the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Alman Riley has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to disallow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on a portion of South Michigan Avenue and East Ida B. Wells Drive, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Riley also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package goods licenses on a portion of West Grand Avenue and North Well Street, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. And a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 8-32-65, designating portions of Superior Street, North State Street, Chicago Avenue, and North Wab Wabash Avenue as noise-sensitive zones, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alman Riley also has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. And a proposed ordinance for vacation of East Bellevue Place within the area bounded by North Rush Street, East Oak Street, and North State Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Knudsen has a proposed ordinance for issuance of a permit for a signed signboard on North portion of North Clark Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Tunney has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package goods licenses on portion of North Broadway, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Gardner has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 4833 North Milwaukee Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Osterman has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Marge Britton Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Silverstein has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portion of Northwestern Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. And a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package good licenses on portion of Northwestern Avenue, which is referred to command license and consumer protection. And Alderman Irvin has a proposed resolution. To call upon the Committee on Public Safety to convene hearings to examine the failure and maintaining adequate emergency response times to meet the public safety needs of the underserved residents, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Your Honor, that concludes the presentation of all the medic introductions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Next up, the approval of the journal, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I am not aware of any corrections to the journal from the December 14th, 2022 regular meeting and move that it be approved. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Next up, unfinished business. Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I am not aware of any unfinished business. Thank you. Uh, miscellaneous business. Um, Alderman Mitchell. I am not aware of any <clears throat> miscellaneous business. And the date and time of the next meeting? I've handed up an ordinance to the clerk setting the date and time of the next meeting. Madam Clerk. Be it ordained by the City Council of City of Chicago. The next regular meeting of the City Council of City of Chicago shall be held on Wednesday, February 1st, 2023, beginning at 10 a.m. in the Council Chamber on the second floor in City Hall, 121 North LaSalle Street, Chicago, Illinois. The ordinance shall take effect and be enforced until after its passage. Hearing no objections, so ordered. <laughs> omnibus, um, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I move that matters in the omnibus be passed by the first most favorable roll call vote by the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Alderman Mitchell on a motion to adjourn. There being no further business before the body, I move that we adjourn. Hearing no objection, so ordered. See you February 1st, everyone. Thank you. We are adjourned.